Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Swedish ebook before it's gone. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah talking to you from a very summery and beautiful Sweden. And today we're going to talk about 10 things to do in the summer in Sweden. I have a lot of ideas already, but let's see what we learn from today's lesson. Att resa utomlands. To travel abroad. Att resa utomlands. To travel abroad. Vår familj åker utomlands. Två veckor varje sommar. Our family travels abroad two weeks every summer. Honestly, when I was a kid we didn't travel abroad that much and when we did we traveled to Denmark and Norway, also very beautiful countries up here in the north. But now that I'm a bit older and uh, make my own decisions regarding traveling, I actually travel more than two weeks every summer. It's uh, a luxury to travel, I think. Att slappa på stranden to relax at the beach. Att slappa på stranden. To relax at the beach. Att slappa på stranden och läsa en bok är det bästa som jag vet. To relax on the beach and read a book is the best thing I know. Honestly, I'm a bit too restless to uh, read on the beach for too long, but I love doing that for a while. And when we have a beautiful summer day like that in Sweden, when you can go to the cliffs and dive into the ocean, it's one of my favorite activities. Lär dig svenska med SwedishPod101.com To learn Swedish with SwedishPod101.com Lär dig svenska med SwedishPod101.com Learn Swedish with SwedishPod101.com And this one, of course, you already know and you're already doing it. Jag får inte glömma bort att lära mig svenska med SwedishPod101.com I can't forget to learn Swedish with SwedishPod101.com I hope you're not forgetting that and since you're watching this video I'm assuming you're up to it at this moment, so good job! Att lära sig laga svensk mat To learn to cook Swedish food Att lära sig laga svensk mat To learn to cook Swedish food Min syster har tagit lektioner för att lära sig att laga svensk mat. My sister has taken classes to learn how to cook Swedish food. To be honest, the Swedish food is not my favorite cuisine, but we have a lot of amazing barbecues in the summer, so that's one of my favorites. But we have a few goodies, so come over here and try some. Att grilla. To have a barbecue. Att grilla. To have a barbecue. Många svenska familjer grillar nästan varje helg på sommaren. Many Swedish families have barbecues almost every weekend in the summer. And this is true. This is true. In every garden, at every balcony, everywhere, there will be families having a barbecue everywhere and it's delicious. So, I hope you're invited to a barbecue party sometimes in Sweden. Att festa hela natten. To party all night. Att festa hela natten. To party all night. Ungdomarna festar hela natten medan den äldre generationen slappar på balkongen. The youngsters party all night while the older generation relaxes on the balcony. This might be true but sometimes it might be the older generation partying, maybe not all night, but partying for sure. Um, and since Sweden is cold in the winter, we have a lot of amazing outdoor parties where you can stay up all night during the summer. So this one is true. Att få en solbränna. To get a tan. Att få en solbränna. To get a tan. Det är viktigt att få en solbränna innan semestern tar slut. It's important to get a tan before your vacation is over. I don't know if I agree on this, but a lot of people are out in the sun a lot to look tanned before vacation. When coming back to work, having to sit indoors, um, they want to show off with a tan. So, I guess it's true to some people. Att vandra. To go hiking. Att vandra. To go hiking. Norra Sverige har vackra platser att vandra på. 
Northern Sweden has beautiful places to go hiking in. And this is true also. I was in Northern Sweden about two years ago. It's very far up from where I live to the north. So it's quite, it's a long travel, even though it's the same country, but it's very beautiful. A lot of mountains, sometimes even snow in some places during the summer. So very different from here, but very beautiful. Att ta kul med vänner. To have fun with friends. Att ta kul med vänner. To have fun with friends. Alla barn väntar på sommarlovet så att de kan ha kul med sina vänner. All the children are waiting for summer vacation so that they can have fun with their friends. And this is true for sure. In Sweden we actually have 10 weeks of holiday when you're in school, when you're a kid. So not the adults, but the kids. And this is an amazing time from what I remember. It felt like an eternity. So I'm pretty sure that all the kids are longing for the summer vacation every year. Att ha ett deltidsjobb. To work a part-time job. Att ha ett deltidsjobb. To work at a part-time job. Jag har inte tid att festa. Jag har ett deltidsjobb varje dag. I don't have time to party. I have a part-time job every weekend. Well, for me working full-time, um, I don't have a part-time job too. But as a student, I did for sure have a part-time job sometimes during the weekends. Um, this is a good way of earning extra money, money and then maybe it's hard to stay up and party. Too bad, but I hope everybody got some good parties now and then too. So uh, go out and enjoy your summer. I hope you started longing for traveling to Sweden sometimes because it's very amazing in the summer. And remember to like comment and subscribe to Swedish Pod 101 and head over to SwedishPod101.com to learn more. See you in the next lesson. Enjoy the summer! Do you feel like you don't speak enough Swedish? that you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask where something is located. After watching this video, you'll be able to ask for directions. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Var är snabbköpet? Det är där borta. Once more with the English translation. Var är snabbköpet? Where is the supermarket? Det är där borta. It's over there. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, where is place? The pattern is, var är place? For example, where is the supermarket? Var är snabbköpet? Var är snabbköpet? Now, how do you answer this question? Det är där borta. Listen to it again. Det är där borta. Det är där borta. This Swedish sentence literally translates as It is there away. But it means it's over there. Here are a few more places you can use with the same pattern. The supermarket. Mataffären. Mataffären. The supermarket. Mataffären. The bank. Banken. Banken. The bank. Banken. The store. Affären. Affären. 
The store. Affären. The school. Skolan. Skolan. The school. Skolan. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Var är banken? Det är där borta. Where is the bank? Var är banken? It's over there. Det är där borta. Var är affären? Det är där borta. Where is the store? Var är affären? It's over there. Det är där borta. Var är skolan? Det är där borta. Where is the school? Var är skolan? It's over there. Det är där borta. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, where is place? Var är place? And how do you answer it? Det är där borta. Imagine you're looking for the bank. Do you remember how to say the bank? Banken. Banken. Say, where is the bank? Var är banken? Now ask where the bank is and answer saying the bank is over there. Var är banken? Det är där borta. Now imagine you're looking for the store. Do you remember how to say the store? Affären. Affären. Say, where is the store? Var är affären? Now ask where the store is, and answer saying the store is over there. Var är affären? Det är där borta. Now imagine you're looking for the school. Do you remember how to say the school? Skolan. Skolan. Say, where is the school? Var är skolan? Now ask where the school is and answer saying the school is over there. Var är skolan? Det är där borta. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to ask the location of a place. You're now able to ask for directions like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Ask your fellow learners directions to a place. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. Hi everybody, welcome to Swedish Pod 101. It's time for another class, another lesson in the Swedish language. Um, and I'm Hannah, talking to you from Sweden.
Today we're gonna go through some very basic uh, words, some foundations. So let's get started with the words. Hey, hello. Very basic, simple. You say hey, it works for everybody, whoever you meet. You say hey and they will probably respond with another hey back to you. Good morgon. Good morning. Bit more formal, nice and polite for the mornings. Means the same as in English, means good morning. Good eftermiddag. Good afternoon. Same, polite and nice, but of course used in the afternoon. And again, it's the same meaning as in English. It means good afternoon. Good eftermiddag. Good afternoon. Good night. Good night. Most of the time it's used for when you're going to sleep. So um, yeah, when you wish someone a nice night, um, good night's sleep, this is what you say. Vad heter du? What's your name? Very easy, we're not that formal in Sweden. So uh, and again, it's the same meaning word by word. Uh, it means, what's your name? You ask what someone is called. Jag heter Hanna. I'm Hanna. Meaning is just, my name is Hanna. And uh, I do of course recommend you to not say Hanna, but use your own name instead. It might get a bit weird if you just copy my name. Unless your name is Hanna, of course. Trevligt att träffas. Nice to meet you. Same meaning as in English, again, um, always you can use this when you meet someone, like when you introduce yourself, but you, you can also use it when you say goodbye and you want to tell them that it was nice getting to know them, nice meeting them, first time or every time. So it doesn't, there's no wrong time for using this one when you want to tell someone that it was nice seeing them. Hur mår du? How are you? Nice and easy short phrase. Um, sometimes in Sweden we do respond like, oh, you know, it's all good, even though it's not. And uh, sometimes if you know someone closer, they probably give you a more thorough explanation, tell them a bit more about what's going on in their life. So this can either be just a polite phrase or when you sincerely mean to, you know, find out more about what's going on in someone's life. Jag mår bra, tack. Och du? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, so maybe this is the polite version of the answer, if everything is good, um, or if everything is good. So this is just the most common way to respond if someone asks you, like, what's going on? It's all good. You know, I don't want to go too deep into whatever is going on in your life. But it's nice and uh, polite. And of course it ends with uh, asking someone back how they are. Snälla. Please. In Swedish we use this word snälla. It's uh, the meaning of snäll is uh, nice, kind. Um, and sometimes we have, uh, we use the word for thanks instead, like in the end of the sentence, like can you pass me the salt, please, we say. Tack, thanks, instead of this word. Um, but they are, you can swap them, you can use either of the two and it's still going to be a nice way of asking someone to maybe help you or, or um, answer a question or something. Tack, thank you. Here we go with this word. Tack, thank you, or thanks. I would say that it's more like thanks. It's the short, nice, uh, not very formal way of just saying thanks. I think maybe this is the most useful word in any language, don't you think? Like, every time if someone helps you with the door or something, you can thank them. And that's uh, one of the first things for me, at least, that I want to learn how to say in the language. Thank people for helping me. Varsågod. You're welcome. Maybe you help someone sometimes and they say thank you for helping them, holding a door or something. I guess in almost every country it's like the norm that you maybe, if someone is carrying a lot of stuff or someone elderly um, walks by, you hold the door for them and 
In Sweden, if they say thank you, you reply with this phrase for you're welcome. So, varsågod. You're welcome. Ja. Yes. It's just yes, you know. When you want to say, you can add the yes please, ja tack. Um, but it's just yes, easy. Nej. No. Also, nej, short and easy, is just the word to say no. You can add the um, politer, uh, politer version, say no thanks, then you just say nej, tack. So, this is actually fun, you can combine the words in this lesson a lot to uh, create more polite sentences. Okay. Okay. So this one you kind of already knew, if you know the English version, and I've heard that Okay is one of the most common words in the world these days. It's uh, used in a lot of languages, almost the same pronunciation, almost the same spelling as well. So, okay, that one always works. Ursäkta mig. Excuse me. For when, to, when you want to maybe walk by someone, someone is standing in your way, like may, maybe accidentally blocking a door or something, you just want to politely ask them if you can um, step by or if they could move to the side, then you use this one. Also, if you want to uh, get attention, you use this, uh, like, excuse me, to get some attention. Maybe in a restaurant or something like that. Förlåt. Sorry. Maybe almost as useful as knowing how to say thanks, you can say this, I'm sorry. And this is maybe more on an emotional level than the phrase for excuse me. It's a bit similar to English there too, I think, um, that you use. This is more like um, serious, maybe deep, deeper level. Maybe you hurt someone or it doesn't have to be like that super emotional, but maybe you um, accidentally um, hurt someone. Then you say, sorry. Vad är klockan? What time is it? So in Sweden we don't use the AM, PM, but we use the, um, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, then we say 13, 14, 15 hours for the afternoon time. And uh, so that's also a good thing to remember when asking about time, that maybe someone will tell you, oh, it's 14, uh, then, then they actually mean 2 p.m. So that's a good fact to, uh, to, to have when you ask for the time so that you understand what they tell you. Var är toaletten? Where is the restroom? Good one to know you all. I, I guess you've sometimes been somewhere and you really needed a restroom. I think that's like part of being human. Um, and then asking for it in the right language can actually be crucial not to have an accident. So uh, actually, as you might, might have heard when I said it, it's quite similar to the word toilet, so uh, toilet. Uh, so you can probably use toilet and get around, but uh, it's always good to know how to ask for this. Vänta ett ögonblick. Wait a moment. Maybe in a restaurant or in a store, if you order something or buy something, they will, they just need to, you know, fix something before they can help you. Uh, then this is what they will take, tell you to just wait a moment. Um, and hopefully it's just a moment and not longer. Hur mycket kostar det här? How much is this? So except for getting food and um, maybe the next step, the next thing you need to solve when you're traveling is to buy some things, do some shopping, um, and then of course in Sweden we don't haggle, so when you ask for the price you'll get what you're expected to pay. Uh, there are a few exceptions to this, like a few markets where you can haggle um, and discuss the price, but most places it's just fixed, so when you ask for it you'll get the answer you need. Can jag få notan tack? Could I get the check please? This is for asking uh, to pay. In a restaurant, you can just raise your hand and ask for the check and you'll be able to pay. Kan jag få notan, tack? Could I get the check, please? Hjälp! Help! 
I hope you don't have to use this one anytime at all um, because it might mean that you're in a tricky situation but if you do end up in one it's of course useful to <laughs> be able to scream for help um, quite similar to the English one Yelp so you just Yelp and hopefully someone will run over and help you with whatever it is that you're getting yourself into Actually, Swedes can be a bit, um, maybe they won't approach you if you look like you don't need help. So if you like pretend that you're okay. So it's actually good to ask for it if you need it. Vi ses senare. See you later. This is, uh, it can either mean that you will see each other later, but you can also just use it to be nice, like, you know, hope to see you later, but you just say, see you later, as if you will actually see them, but it's kind of a nice way of saying that you uh, hope to see them later. So, uh, vi ses senare. Or, as you would usually say, actually in Swedish you would say, vi ses sen. Sen, instead of senare. So it's that's a shorter version. A um, bit more of slang, but you can maybe start with the, the correct one. Hej då! Goodbye. Um, short and easy, a version of the hey uh, that we used to say hello. Um, you add a little part in the end and you can use this for anyone. It's also like, doesn't matter if they are older or younger or anything like that. Use the same word. And this was the end of the uh, lesson, uh, top 25 phrases in Swedish. Um, I hope you uh, learned some of them already and uh, that you'll take your time to go out and practice short, easy phrases that will make you sound a bit more nice. And the Swedish people, of course, like everybody, appreciates when you um, use some of their language. Remember to like, subscribe and comment um, on uh, Swedish Pod 101 this channel and also head over to swedishpod101.com to learn more free Swedish. I hope you're still having fun with the language. I am. Hey då, bye bye! Welcome to SwedishPod101.com's Svenska på tre minuter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swedish. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Hi, I'm Elin. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Swedish expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swedish. There are only two sentences you need. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Hi, I'm Elin. Nice to meet you. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Start by saying, hej, jag heter. Then say your name. Hej, jag heter Elin. Finally say, trevligt att träffas. Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. And now let's see the same sentence in a different format. Hallå, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Hello, Elin. Nice to meet you. Hallå, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. So, what a change from the previous introduction. Let's take a close look at these together. Hey has been substituted with an alternative greeting. Hallå. Swedish for hello. Jag heter Elin has been shortened to just Elin. In this sentence, it's implied that I am introducing myself as Elin. In a formal setting, you would say your full name. One more time. One way to introduce yourself in Swedish is Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. An alternative way to introduce yourself is Hallå, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. 
Now it's time for Elin's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Sweden. It's more common to use Hej, jag heter Elin. Trevligt att träffas. When you introduce yourself once, in front of a group of people or one single person. If you greet several people individually, you use the short phrase Hej, Elin. Trevligt att träffas. Do you know how to say thank you in Swedish? You'll learn how to say this and many other words in the next Svenska på tre minuter lesson. Tack, vi ses då. See you then. Hej! Hej, jag heter James. Vad heter du? Jag heter Anders. Kul att träffas. Ja, kul att träffas. Det är fest ikväll här, eller? Ja, just det. Vi ses på festen. Ja, absolut. Jag heter Elin. Hi everybody, I'm Elin. Welcome to SwedishPod101.com's Svenska på tre minuter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swedish. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying tack. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Sweden. Är ni redo? Are you ready? Så låt oss börja. Så let's start. The most commonly used informal greeting is hey. Hey. Hey means hi. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with anyone. Yet, it isn't the only way to greet someone. We also have hallo. Hallo. Which means hello. And more time specific greetings like god dag. God dag. Literally, god dag means good day. As a rule of thumb, we can use god dag only during the daytime, from morning until evening. During the evening we say go kväll. God kväll. Kväll is Swedish for evening. So go kväll means good evening. Finally in the morning we say god morgon. God morgon. This means good morning. However, instead of god dag and god kväll, it's much more common to just use hey. God morgon on the other hand is still the most common phrase to use in the morning. When saying goodbye, we say, hej då, hej då. When parting for a long time, we often add, ha det bra, ha det bra, which means be well. Finally, in Swedish, we have an expression meaning see you soon, that can be considered both formal and informal. Vi ses, vi ses. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swedish. Let's review them all again. When meeting friends or someone we don't know, hey, there also is hallo. In the morning, god morgon. During the day, god dag. And in the evening, god kväll. When leaving, we say hej då. When leaving, but want to imply see you soon, vi ses. To which we sometimes add ha det bra or be well. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Elin's insights. In formal situations, Swedish people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. However, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug. Swedish people are generally shy and might not take the initiative to hug. But don't be afraid to do it, it's always appreciated. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Tala du engelska? Do you already know it? I'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Svenska på tre minuter lesson. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swedish. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swedish, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the most common way to say it. Tala du engelska? Talar du engelska? Swedish is a pretty straightforward language. We conjugate verbs based on time, which means we have past, present and infinitive. The question, talar du engelska, translates as, are you speaking English? As in English, speaking is the present tense, talar. The second word in the sentence, du, simply means you. And you probably recognize engelska to be English. 
Talar du engelska? Like in English, there are a whole bunch of ways to ask this question. Let's see another one. It literally means, do you know English? Kan du tala engelska? Kan du tala engelska? When asking this question to someone you don't know, begin by saying, ursäkta mig, or excuse me. Ursäkta mig, kan du tala engelska? Ursäkta mig, kan du tala engelska? As you might have noticed, the verb tala is slightly different than talar. Remember, the verb changes depending on the time it is in. We are now talking about the infinitive since it is coupled with kan, which means can. The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ja. Yes. Ja. Lite. A little. Lite. Nej, jag talar inte engelska. No, I don't speak English. Nej, jag talar inte engelska. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to put inte after the verb talar. Inte means not. Jag talar inte engelska literally translates into I speak not English. Now it's time for Elin's insights. For those of you who are not just English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Swedish people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute engelska with italienska for Italian, franska for French, spanska for Spanish, tyska for German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression ursäkta mig. But did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Swedish. I'll see you in our next Svenska på 3 minuter lesson. På återseende! In this video, you learned 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swedish. Hi everybody, my name is Emma. Welcome to the 800 core Swedish words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swedish. But there's a twist, which each new lesson in this series will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at SwedishPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Swedish. Okay, let's get started. First is... Idag. Today. Idag. Idag. Today. Hon ser väldigt ledsen ut idag. She looks really sad today. Hon ser... Väldigt ledsen ut idag. Igår. Yesterday. Igår. Igår. Yesterday. Jag tog en dag ledigt igår. I took a day off yesterday. Jag tog en dag ledigt igår. Imorgon. Tomorrow. Imorgon. I morgon. Tomorrow. I morgon är det min födelsedag. Tomorrow is my birthday. I morgon är det min födelsedag. Vecka. Week. Vecka. Vecka. Week. Det är sju dagar på en vecka. Det är seven days in a week. Det är sju dagar på en vecka. År. Year. År. År. Year. Ett kalenderår. One calendar year. Ett kalenderår. Sekund. Second. Sekund. Sekund. 
second. Det är 58 sekunder kvar på stoppuret. There are 58 seconds left on the stopwatch. Det är 58 sekunder kvar på stoppuret. Minut. 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 Det är en minut till midnatt. It's one minute to midnight. Det är en minut till midnatt. Timme. Hour. Timme. Timme. Hour. Jag kommer hem från jobbet om en timme. I'll be home from work in an hour. Jag kommer hem från jobbet om en timme. Klocka. Klock. Klocka. Klocka. Klock. Väggklockan hänger på väggen. The wall clock is hanging on the wall. Väggklockan hänger på väggen. Klockan. A clock. Klockan. Klockan. A clock. Dina vänner kom klockan sju. Your friends came at seven o'clock. Dina vänner kom klockan sju. Kalender. 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 Jag markerade vår årsdag i kalendern. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. Jag markerade vår årsdag i kalendern. Måndag. Monday. Måndag. Måndag. Monday. Arbetsveckan börjar på måndag. The work week starts on Monday. Arbetsveckan börjar på måndag. Tisdag. Tuesday. Tisdag. Tisdag. Tuesday. Första januari infaller på en tisdag i år. Januari 1st falls on a Tuesday this year. Första januari infaller på en tisdag i år. Onsdag. Wednesday. Onsdag. Onsdag. Wednesday. Vi spelar poker hos mig på onsdagars kvällar. Wednesday nights we play poker at my house. Vi spelar poker hos mig på onsdagars kvällar. Torsdag. Thursday. Torsdag. Torsdag. Thursday. Imorgon är det onsdag och i övermorgon är det torsdag. Tomorrow is Wednesday. And the day after tomorrow is Thursday. I morgon är det onsdag. Och i övermorgon är det torsdag. Fredag. Friday. Fredag. Fredag. Friday. Skriv ner planerna för fredag i kalendern. Write the plans for Friday on the calendar. Skriv ner planerna för fredag i kalendern. Lördag. Saturday. Lördag. Lördag. Saturday. Jag gör hushållsarbete i fem timmar varje lördag. I do housework every Saturday for five hours. Jag gör... Hushållsarbete i fem timmar varje lördag. Söndag. Sunday. Söndag. 
Söndag. Sunday. Det är fars dag på söndag. Sunday is Father's Day. Det är fars dag på söndag. Göra. Du. Göra. Göra. Du. Jag har så mycket jobb att göra. I have so much work to do. Jag har så mycket jobb att göra. Gå. Go. Gå. 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 Gå till parken. Go to the park. Gå till parken. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at SwedishPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Hej då! Hi everybody, I'm Hannah and it's time for another class in Swedish and today we're going to talk about 10 questions that you should know, so 10 basic questions that are very handy for maybe a friendly conversation, a first time conversation or something similar. So let's get started. Vad heter du? What's your name? And the sample answer could be Jag heter Hanna. Jag heter Hanna. My name is Hanna. Very useful and easy and always good to ask for someone's name and uh, also allows you to maybe learn some Swedish names. We say them a bit differently, even though some of them are similar to similar sounding to uh, other languages. Who more do? How are you? Jag mår bra. Jag mår bra. I'm fine. There we had the uh, question and the answer to this. Uh, it's a very good starter and uh, maybe if you know someone you'll get more than the I'm fine, but for a nice and polite start of a conversation it's also um, a sign of interest to ask someone how they are. I think that's similar to most languages. Var kommer du ifrån? Where are you from? Jag kommer från Kina. Jag kommer från Kina. I'm from China. Not that I am, but uh, in my case I would of course use Sweden and maybe for you it's uh, another country. So, um, But if you travel, I know that you meet a lot of people from different places and then knowing how to ask them where they're from is uh, a good conversation starter. And also interesting to find out. Maybe you can ask more questions about uh, where they're from. Var lärde du dig svenska? Where did you learn Swedish? Jag lärde mig svenska på swedishpod101.com Jag lärde mig svenska på swedishpod101.com I learned Swedish at swedishpod101.com Maybe you already guessed this. <laughs> Var bor du? Where do you live? Jag bor i Stockholm. Jag bor i Stockholm. I live in Stockholm. Remember to add the place that you live in and not use Stockholm if you're not in Stockholm. But uh, Stockholm is a very beautiful place, so maybe uh, it's a good idea to move there. It's fun to find out more about where people are from and uh, to hear about their country, I believe. And... Uh, when you travel in Sweden, also not everybody is from uh, from Sweden or from Stockholm. Var jobbar du? Where do you work? Ja, jag jobbar på ICA. Ja, jobbar på ICA. I work at ICA. And for you who don't know, ICA is a big uh, grocery store in Sweden. There are others, but this is a very common one. So if you look for a grocery store, you can ask for ICA. 
Vad har du för telefonnummer? What's your phone number? And to this you could reply det är and then all the numbers but I think we're going to get to the numbers in another lesson. Det är meaning it is. And remember the country code if this is someone from, who's not from your country if you get their phone number. Vad kostar det? How much is it? Det är, it is. Or here's another one you can also use. Det kostar, it costs. Good to know maybe after sightseeing what you do is you go shopping for some things and we don't haggle in Sweden, so you don't have to do the haggling. You just have to ask for the price and you'll get the response to what you're probably going to pay. Gillar du svensk mat? Do you like Swedish food? So here we have both two different answers. Ja, det gör jag, meaning yes I do. Or nej, det gör jag inte, meaning no, I don't. And to be real honest, the Swedish cuisine is not my favorite. Um, I prefer Asian food, for example, over Swedish food, but we have a few really good ones. And uh, if you're not in Sweden, maybe you have an Ikea, you know, the furniture store somewhere around, and you can try the Swedish meatballs. They're a traditional dish and uh, kids really like them. But that's a first good start to uh, trying Swedish food. Har du varit i Sverige? Have you been to Sweden? Ja, det har jag. Meaning, yes, I have. Nej, det har jag inte. Meaning, no, I haven't. And if you haven't been to Sweden, I hope you will go. Um, but please go during the summer unless you are into skiing or snowboarding because summer in Sweden is just magical. We have uh, daylight until very late, like almost depending depending on where you go but if you go very far north there the sun is not even gonna set and in the south we have very long days so that's a huge recommendation for you who haven't been to sweden yet and this was the end of today's lesson 10 questions that you should know uh, 10 questions that come in handy for a conversation remember to comment like and subscribe to swedishpod101.com and head over to swedishpod101.com to learn more and i'll see you in the next lesson bye bye Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Swedish ebook before it's gone.